Hey everyone, welcome to another one of our community live events. We are so excited to have you all join us. My name is Nicole and I will be your host and moderator from today. Hi guys. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to hear from you all. Let me know who you are and where you're joining us from um we'd really love to hear from you if you have um friends who are interested in content creation editing tips we have a very exciting guest so make sure that you invite them um our exciting guest today is matt soley also known as a is photography matt is a canadian online photographer known for his presets and editing tutorials as well as for his short forms and photos he has introduced viral videos on how to reach similar coloring and editing styles as famous films like Fight Club, Euphoria, Batman, as well as historical eras like the 80s and 90s and music styles like grunge, jazz and pop culture trends. Many of these tutorials have gained him millions of views and gotten him over 2 million collective followers. Photography is his passion. He started in late 2020 and has adored the hobby over the last nearly three years and made it a goal to share photos online. He is a proud Canon shooter and his favorite types of photography are street, astro and landscape. He plans on doing photography full-time as a creator, having worked with companies like Adobe, the Canadian National Art Center and Small Rig. He plans to collaborate even more and push for new ideas and all this at only 18. So very excited, very impressive. But before we in, um, dive into this exciting discussion and meet our really fantastic guest i'd like to share a few refreshes on how our community events are run for those who are joining us for the first time hello um so we'll start our con uh, discussion on content creation with matt then we'll move on to an open discussion with all the views so in the meantime please do send in your questions in the little question bubble uh, but just some of the rules. Number one, be active. Feel free to ask questions in the chat during our main discussion. Two, please, no spam in the comments. Let's just keep it to the discussion that we're having. Um, you don't want to miss out on this opportunity to ask what you need to ask while Matt is here. Um, number three, no inappropriate language or comments in the chat. Please, let's keep it positive as much as you guys are currently doing. And then number four, please share your opinion in the chat. But enough with the rules and onto a bit of good news. We also have something special for our viewers and prequel subscribers. We're offering a one year subscription discount at the end of this live. So please keep your eyes on the stream and on the comments. Okay, let's get the show rolling and let us invite who you're actually here for. So Matt will be joining. Hi guys. Very good to see everyone here. Um, keep, keep your comments and questions in. Hey Matt. Hi. <laughs> How are you I'm doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm super excited for today. So We are super excited to have you. Thank you so much for joining us and agreeing to share your tips um, about content creation and editing. I'm sure lots of people are excited to hear you. I, I've done a brief introduction. Um, about who you are, but I'm sure everyone would love to hear from you. So please just tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah. So um, as you said, my name is Matt, also known as AS Photography. Um, I'm a online photographer and digital content creator, and um, I'm known for my editing videos, my photography, and my short films. And yeah, it's been a passion for about three years. I've been making content for about two, and I just I just love making videos, making content, and making editing tutorials for you guys to see. So. I'm happy to be here and I'm super excited for today. So awesome. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Matt. Um, your journey as a content creator so far has really been remarkable. Um, you've kind of gained this vast and loyal audience that follows you for your creative work. But can you share a little bit about how you discovered this passion for photography and editing and basically what motivated you to share this online? Yeah, 
so um, I've always really had like a drive to make content. Um, I was always the kid who made like the Let's Play YouTube videos and had a really strong drive to make videos and content. Um, and when I picked up photography over the pandemic, I found it really gave me like this view of the world I didn't have before this. Um, and I just loved it. I mean, ever since then, I just never had my camera not with me. I always had it on my neck or on my back. And I just, I love taking it everywhere. And eventually when I found Instagram to be a platform I could use, I just went on it as kind of a gallery and I never stopped. I mean, I just kind of kept making content and loved making it. And then it just kind of got me here. I kept making it, kind of making, loving it. And I really just, I don't know, felt invested in making content. And I, I mean, I love it. It's my favorite hobby I've had so far. And I just, I think it's, it makes you see the world in such a nice way. So, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so as your photography skills have evolved, because as much as it's a passion, you're very skilled at it. Mm -hmm. um, how did you essentially notice your progress? Like, did you start creating editorial tools and short form, uh, uh, editing tutorials and short forms initially? Or did you explore these avenues, um, other avenues first before realizing uh, that you have the skill? Yeah, um, no, this, yeah, so I've always had lots of different arts hobbies. I've loved, you know, video making. I've done that way before photography and all that stuff like that. Um, stuff, you know, all YouTube making, all that, like I said. Uh, but with photography, I found I really just liked taking pictures of what was around me. It wasn't something I saw as like an editing or, you know, short films. It was just kind of what I had around me. Um, and I found through that when I went, like, traveled and I'd, you know, hang out with friends, I found way more styles and way from things I'd like to learn. Um, and for example, with editing, I picked it up, uh, you know, fairly quickly, but I didn't get it at all for at first. I didn't even edit for about three months. And I just slowly kind of explored that more as I got into photography. So it all just kind of came with experience, I think. That's super interesting. Um, just before we get into a bit more of the technical side of how you created, uh, just in terms of discussion around social media, social media platforms are quite crucial for promoting and growing um, photography and your photography brand in particular. Mm -hmm. But from your experience, um, which platforms would you say are the most effective for reaching and engaging your audience? Um, I think it's tough because I think that there's a lot of platforms that better suit different content creators depending on um, how you want to make your content. If you want to make videos versus you want to just have static images, there's different content for that. But Ultimately, I don't think there's a better platform than Instagram, although it has its flaws with like reels and insights and stuff. I think that it really is made for photographers. And if you're a photographer, this is really the best place to start. Um, and yeah, just getting your followers engaged, no matter the platform, it all just comes down to listening to them and seeing what they want and not feeling like you're just a number, you know, getting connected with your audience and really pushing your content to them specifically. And is that basically the strategy that you're currently employing, um, how would you say your approach is or has been when it comes to building that loyal following on social? Um, yeah, I'd say so. It's, it's hard, but um, I think it just kind of comes down to how I read my audience and how I take things that I know they want and kind of make it into my content. Um, I think it's kind of hard to, you know, try to read every comment section that you see, but if you see things that people are constantly asking for or things that you notice are trends. Um, I think it's really important to listen to them because ultimately you like being listened to, you know, you like being appreciated. And I think that's definitely helped me improve my content for sure. That's awesome. And you've mentioned Instagram as being quite a strong platform. And I just want to expand on the question I was asking earlier, where um, do you think that content creators should go be on all platforms or do you think there needs to be a specific focus and strategy for one or two platforms? Um, yeah, again, it really depends because something like Instagram and TikTok now, you can really mirror your content. Like my TikTok is basically just my reels on this platform, but um, I find that if you, you can use both and get a platform on both, which is always, you know, you want more people to see your work. But I really think it's really daunting to think that, you know, I have to be on every platform and I have to monopolize, you know, YouTube and Reddit and TikTok because ultimately you're going to lose sight of what you want and you're just going to make your content way less effective. So I think it's important to focus on one, but when you get that level of, you know, skill and comfortability going into other ones is super, you know, it helps. Well, it's, it's nice to expand your audience to different realms. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to focus on one, 
then focus on other ones later, depending on what you want to do with your content. Awesome. And that's, and that's a good, good approach. I think very good advice there. Um, but what, when it comes to your content creation and, um, we spoke about kind of fostering a relationship with your loyal audience, but what about, um, the approach to creativity or, um, you know, making sure that you remain creative on social media, what is your approach or strategy for that? Um, I think there's a few different things you can do for sure. Um, one I don't want to discourage is just taking inspiration from other creators. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of afraid to say I took from this and I took from that, but ultimately art is, you know, what you see and taking it into your own work. So, um, I take a lot of inspiration from creators, but I also take a lot of inspiration from people that comment on my videos and send me messages because again, like I said, it's your audience. You want to listen to what they're saying and what, you know, they're, they're asking for, because ultimately that's going to help you, you know, prove make your audience happier and make everyone else that watches your videos happier. Um, and yeah, um, I also think that it's really important to just take the environment around you and make that into your own content. Um, I think not a lot of people are living in big cities that are full of content opportunities and stuff like that, but taking what you have around you and making it into content and making it into things that are beautiful that people want to see is really important. And I think that's something that you can do anywhere at any time. And that's really helped me get kind of inspired by everything else. So do you find that you take more of, or that you have quite an emotive approach to creating content? Like, do you put a lot of those emotions even, because I mean, there's a lot of technical stuff that goes into it and we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, from like, in terms of taking in what's around you, is that a very emotive approach? Yeah, I'd say so for sure. I mean, um, Ultimately, people have emotions and people feel connected to other people feeling emotional. So I find that when you post something that's, you know, kind of your you with your friends or something that's really emotional, people often connect with it and like it and, you know, follow along because we all feel those emotions and seeing them turn into art is something that we love. So even if it's something as simple as, you know, just like a little video of people with, you know, friends, like I said, it's it's something that people feel connected to. So I think it's it's definitely important not to just be a static, you know, technique machine, you know? That's, that's true. And that's awesome. Um, so guys, if you're just joining us, we have Matt Soli, AKA AIDS photography in our live. Um, we've just been discussing his social media approach, building that following and relationship with your followers. Um, we will be taking your questions soon. So please make sure that you put those questions in the question bubble. Um, I'm sure he's as excited to hear from you as you are to hear from him. Uh, what I wanted to discuss with you next, Matt, is just around editing trends. Um, so essentially, tutorials and how-to videos have become a significant part of content creators' content um, around what's currently trending. What, in your opinion, makes them so popular? Um, this is tutorials and how-to videos. And what inspired you in particular to create them? Yeah, so I think that tutorials in general are a medium that will never go, you know, never not work because people love to learn. It's the same reason that like we go to college or we, we go to class and stuff like that, even though it's not something we think we, we, we want to do, it's we always love learning and adapting our mind to different strategies. And I think that having that be a 20 or 30 second bite sized thing on your free page is something that people appreciate. You know, it's something that people can learn from and, um, you know, expand their knowledge for that, you know, they wouldn't be able to, to do before online creation and stuff like that. And I think that, especially with photography, there's kind of this level of gatekeeping almost with information. So I think that, at least for me, um, when someone shares like a really uh, useful fact or something that I didn't know before, I almost appreciate it because a lot of creators wouldn't have done that. They would have thought, you know, I don't want people to know this big secret, you know, and I want to be ahead. And when someone shares that and is like, I want you to learn and adapt from that, it's something that we all appreciate and like and follow them for. So I think it's a really expansive media and will never not be, you know, Never not be in style. Yes, awesome. Um, so, do you do you actively monitor popular editing styles, or do you primarily choose solutions that are visually interesting to you? Um, I think it's a mix of both. Um, as a content creator, you have to be always adapting and always open minded to different editing styles and trends and what's coming. But a lot of stuff that I make is just because I love the IP, I love the look of it. Um, like my Fallen Angels preset, for example, I love that movie and the style of it. And even though it wasn't 
you know, topping the hundreds of thousands of likes trending and all that. It was just something that I thought other people would enjoy. And ultimately that was what happened. And I think when you get that level of knowing your audience, but also knowing what you like and what you can create is when you make the best content. So yeah, that's about what I would say. So, I mean, you said that, you know, really it's not about necessarily always following trends, um, but following what you think is going to be interesting. But I do want to ask, like, are there other editing formats or trends that you find are exciting or promising at the moment? Yeah, um, I there's this kind of genre of reels called microfilms, which is where someone takes like a, I don't know, a 30 or 40 second video and makes it into like a very detailed story or a, it's like a film almost. And um, <clears throat> there's a lot of creators that see do that. And I'm like, this is awesome. You know, this is like exactly what the medium was asking for and what, you know, is taking artistic to its limits. And there's lots of creators that see doing that and I love it. I mean, genre films, reciter, all these creators I see on TikTok, I always see that. I'm like, this is awesome. This is the future. So I love that. That's that's my favorite for sure. That's awesome. Um, in your experience, though, have you noticed any patterns in terms of what content goes viral and becomes popular? I think this is a big one um, because going viral, you know, it's, it seems like a goal for a lot of content creators. But what do you think are the patterns that actually could lead to content going viral or becoming popular? Yeah, so content creation is a very kind of lucrative thing. It's it's hard to say one thing will do one thing and not one thing will do the other because ultimately it all comes down to what people see and what gets pushed. Um, but the biggest things I see whenever I see content go viral is usually um, it's really well produced or very high quality. Um, people like looking at nice videos the same way they like looking at pretty films or nice shot YouTube videos. People like seeing things that take effort. And when I see a video with like nice editing, nice lighting, good cameras, um, it usually does better just because people like looking at it. But I also find, especially with the, the kind of modern landscape of social media, um, the faster the content is, the more uh, high, like fast paced, uh, high content, super, super quick. Um, that really does well with the feeds because people, you know, the first five seconds are the most important. So uh, whenever you do that and you have a really strong five seconds, it's all in 20 seconds and it all gets everything the point across. Um, that really does well. And whenever I see content like that, I usually see that it's one of like, you know, multiple five or six and then you keep scrolling and you see all the other lights, you know, that's, that's really where it's at, I think. Cool. Um, so just in terms of your videos in particular, um, a lot of what you do, and I think we've kind of been discussing it a little bit, but just to get into a bit more, um, your videos are often based on replicating the color grading of different films and series. And those are really popular ones um, on your page. How did you develop this idea and how do you choose which movies or series to feature in your videos? Yeah, so the story of my first preset video is kind of funny because I had made it like two or three times before that and it didn't get anywhere. Um, it was just off of this film preset that I, I really liked and I, I still use today. I used like 40, 50 pictures yesterday. Um, and uh, it's a really good preset and I thought it should share it to the world. And then the first video blew up and I realized this was such a, a usable format and series I could do. And then ultimately I thought like, well, what are some that people were trying to replicate in their photos? And I thought of like, you know, Fallen Angels, Stranger Things, um, Barbie, like it's all these things that people really love and these IPs that uh, people really gravitate to. Um, and then I just thought, you know, this was such a good way to get a series, get, you know, trending media to be in photography. And um, yeah, that's really how I developed it. And I really just picked my films off of what I like and what I think will be a good appealing color grade that people will also like. Um, so like I said, Barbie was one I did last week. Um, and it's a very distinct art style, pink, and I mean, everyone wants to see Barbie right now, so it's something that I thought would be perfect for, you know, people to see and capitalize off of, for sure. Wow, oh, that's cool. Um, so we actually have a question from um, at abner.alti, and I think this is an interesting one um, because you've got such a large following, uh, you know, the questions might be geared towards that, but, Someone with a smaller following. So um, at Edna's asking, how much would you recommend a newer or smaller account um, or creators to post in a week in order to grow? And I think this question really is about the broader strategy for a aspiring creator with a smaller following or account. 
Mm. Um, I think whoever sent that in, you are in the hardest part right now. Um, the first year or two of content creation is almost impossible because you have, you know, very little feedback. You're just going off of what your friends and family say. And it's almost like you're, you know, doing a, a top star, five star performance for no one. And it sucks. But um, ultimately, the biggest thing you can do is just keep posting because um, it takes time. It's going to take a year, maybe it could take shorter, it could be longer, but it's ultimately just the content that you push out that clicks with an audience and that can come anytime. So I really recommend just posting whenever you can. Um, I think you don't need a schedule per se, but just being able to post frequently and not having it be dead for months is um, something that's really important. And if you have that drive, I think you will eventually get that audience that you want because um, work gets, hard work gets paid off almost always in everything. So if you keep working, keep posting as much as you can and eventually something will click and you'll get a video that, you know, does well and you can capitalize off of that even further. So keep going. It's, it's hard, but this is, this, this is, it's fun. It, it takes a while, but it's, it's worth it. <laughs> so, um, Matt, you are clearly an inspiration, um, as a content creator to a lot of other content creators. Um, but I think a key question that, you'll be asking, and this is something that at the Traffic Norm is asking, is who are your inspirations when it comes to content um, creation? Or in general, who are your inspirations? Okay, I'm just gonna wait for Matt to reconnect. But guys, while um, Matt is reconnecting, please send through more of your questions. Um, I think we've got very exciting questions, but if you don't want to miss this opportunity to have a chat to Matt, to ask him the questions that you need, uh, I'm just going to invite Matt in again. Thank you so much for all your comments so far. And thank you so much for the positivity as well. <laughs> don't worry, we are going to get him in soon. So I'm just going to get Matt back in. But yeah, keep keep sharing um, the love, keep sharing your comments. You guys have been great. I'll try to get through all of your questions um, as soon as possible. Oh. Hey, Matt, you Hello. are back. Oh, no, that's, sorry about, about that. My internet's... No like, problem. But yes. Um, yes, yeah, so that the happens. question... So, yes, so the last question that we had was, who are your inspirations who inspires the creator yeah um so i think it's hard to pinpoint one specific creator that i have been you know taken off of that really got me started because i really just explored every single type of photography i could um but i really think that some creators um that made youtube videos made the tutorials and ones that make you know stuff today um are ones that really inspire me uh, a few i can think of uh, North Borders was one of them I really liked. Um, Mercider and John Rourke, who I liked as well. Um, Alan Wallace, he makes astrophotography, and he got me into that. Um, but they're all creators that do very specific things that inspire me, and I don't really have one that like inspired all of my content. And I think that should be the same for anyone watching this too. Um, I think it's all kind of based on what you want to learn. And from there, um, I think it's important to just expand your horizon and look at a lot, a lot of different creators. Awesome. Um, so just on salon trends, wanted to ask you again, like in general, are there any ideas or trends that you are really excited about um, at the moment? Not just in terms of editing, but you know, on the whole. Um, yeah, I think um, I'm always open, like I said, to different trends, but I really love the fact that people are sharing their photos a lot more. Um, I think a lot of reels before when people were trying to figure it out were just like, you know, videos or funny videos or fast paced comedy, stuff like that, which is, it has its place for sure. But now I'm seeing a lot of videos of people showing off like their 10 out of 10 photos or things that like my favorite photos of this. And I've kind of hopped on that as well. And I think that really showcases photography in a medium that wasn't as appreciated before. Cause I think that reels are definitely the, the hot spot of Instagram right now. And having that be kind of coincided with photos is something that, wasn't there before, but is happening right now. So I think that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so just another quick question from at AI health guru, um, who says my views suddenly dropped. Do you have any solution? 
Well, yeah, it's it's hard because um, even me, it's happened so many times. Um, uh, like for example, I got shadow banned around seven thousand, seven hundred thousand, which. I mean, it's ironic, but um, I didn't get anything like my content was basically shut off and I had to restart going back up again. And it's something that's like I was an established creator and it still happened. Um, and it's it's hard because it's never something that you can predict or something that you can even see. Um, but it's something that you have to adapt with because ultimately social media is not what you created. It's what's given to you. So even if that happens, even if you get shadow banned, you get content block you can't see likes um just keep posting never let anything persuade you from doing anything because even though it might seem hard to lose that you know that audience that you used to have that goes down or how you have to rebuild it it's going to come back and like i said hard work pays off so it all comes down to that awesome so we're going to chat a little bit about just the editing tools that you use and a bit more of um, your technical approach um, but again, for those who are just joining, we are speaking to Matt, aka A, -A, -A it's photography. <laughs> uh, Matt's been sharing really great tips so far um, on content creation as well as social media strategy and approach for content creators of all sizes. Um, and that's been really exciting. Just remember, we do also have, um, you know, just a really special announcement for you guys at the end of this live. So keep watching keep watching the comments um matt is getting a lot of love in the comments max i'm sure you can see um people are loving your visuals love your pictures love your photos um and there are quite a few questions around editing tools um so i just want to get into that chat quickly so continuous learning and development is quite vital for content creators what resources or methods do you use to stay updated with the latest trends techniques as well as equipment in the photography and editing world yeah so um i don't think there's ever going to be one strict source that's going to give you everything that you want for news and correct you know next next thing that's going to be big but um ultimately if you just surround yourself with photographers and you are really involved with the community that information will just come to you naturally because you know, we're all photographers, we're all kind of having that same ideas, same new content, same new equipment that we all want to learn about. So I think that I just follow a ton of different creators who are, you know, working photographers, content creators, video makers, and ultimately they post about it and then it just spreads. So if you want to learn about all of that, just, you know, keep following photographers that you love, find ones, go on your explore page, hashtags, and just find a bunch and you'll basically see everything that you need to see about photography. So yeah, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Do you have other um, specific resources that help people expand their knowledge um, on, like, apart from like some creators, is there any um, space where you could get um, knowledge around, or expand your knowledge on photography? I mean, I think it's kind of a given, but I think YouTube will never be not the, the perfect place to learn anything about photography. Um, you get creators who spend, you know, super, super long times and they're super talented with lots of editing to make it so much easier to just teach you exactly what you need to learn. Um, and I guarantee you, if you look up anything tutorial related or, um, you know, photography related, even uh, you'll see exactly what you want. And it's it's perfect. I think um, I learned a lot on YouTube and there's a lot of YouTubers I have to thank for everything that I learned that um, I just learned because I Google it, you know, just out of nothing. And I just want to look on YouTube. So definitely there, I think, is the best platform for that. Yeah. And I mean, Matt also does lots of um, how-to videos and tutorials. So here is your actual knowledge source. Um, as a content creator, do you believe that finding the perfect editing tool is essential? Um, what factors do you consider when selecting an editing tool that best suits your creative needs? Yeah. Um, so I think it's hard because <clears throat> there's not really one platform you can just buy that's going to be perfect for everything that you want. Um, a lot of platforms have very specific niches that you work for and ones that work better for other people than others. Um, and I think that's uh, ultimately just how you work and how your workflow works. Um, I've tried a lot of different programs that I've liked and not liked. And um, it's not like any of those programs are wrong. And if you use them, they're wrong. It's just I didn't like my end results. And with the programs that I found, I just they work for me and that's all just because of how I work and how I like to take photos and that's just how you work so I say 
best advice is just to try every platform that you can find and just kind of see which one works the best for you because I don't think there'll be one platform that's perfect for anybody because we're all different photographers. We all work different, you know, that's, that's how it goes, so. Cool. Um, and just in terms of talking about editing tools, and I know you're saying that, you know, different editing tools work, work for different people, um, but in your experience, have you found it beneficial to master multiple editing tools, or do you prefer to focus on getting one particular tool right? And are there advantages or disadvantages to either approach? Yeah, so um, I think it's really important to focus on just one at a time, even if the program you don't like it, um, and you don't want to use it, like you just use it a bit at a time and then move on to the next one. Because using a bunch of different programs all at once is super intimidating. I don't think you should ever have, you know, one thing. Uh, I mean, multiple things be your only thing that you can use. So I'd say start with one. And then once you really master and understand that, I agree, you really, there's lots of different programs that could do perfect things. Like, say you want to do a sky replacement thing and you want to edit your photo before that, um, learn how to edit your photo before that, but then, you know, learn how to replace your sky and learn how to give yourself this kind of preset. You know, it's all these things that build to making your perfect photo. But um, yeah, definitely start with the basics because you don't, you don't want to run up a flight of stairs and then, you know, not realize what you're even going to, you know, you want to make sure you know what you're working towards almost, so. Yeah. Awesome. That's really, that's really good advice. Um, so I'm just going to go to some questions quickly. Um, in the meantime, I'm, let's just see. Oh, okay. So at, sorry, I'm going to probably butcher this, but at Sergi, um, at Sergi says, hi, Matt, uh, is it Sergi? Shiro, Shiroji. <laughs> I'm your biggest fan ever. Um, I, how long does it take you to edit photos um, and videos because you send out quality content and very often it's always super great. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think again, um, I've had a lot of experience with editing. I've done it for a very long time. So my numbers wouldn't reflect the same as yours, but starting out, it took, you know, forever. It takes a long time to understand the editing tools and what your eye makes and the colors. But um, with now, I have a lot of different workflows and a lot of things like presets and just different settings that I know always to do. Um, so I work very fast now. I take maybe about, you know, it depends on how many photos or if they're all kind of the same idea, but I can usually edit, you know, a lot of photos in about an hour or two. Um, and that just comes from experience. Like I said, um, it might take you an hour or two to edit one photo. It still takes me sometimes that, and it just depends on what photos you're taking. So. Um, yeah, it's all comes down to what the photos you're taking are and your workflow, but eventually you get way more comfortable with it and that can come in different ways. So, yeah. Awesome. Now, I, I just want to sit a little bit on the content, or, um, the comments are around your quality content and it being really great. Um, just in terms of where you're shooting. So I, I know that you have a video out that talks about the best places to shoot. Um, but can you just name like your top five absolute favorite places to shoot content? That's tough. Um, I've, <laughs> I've traveled a fair bit in the last few years, which I'm really lucky for it. But um, I think everywhere has like something really different about them that you want to photograph. And it's hard to say one, but um, I love Vancouver. That's probably my favorite city in the world. Um, and I'm actually moving out there in about a month. So um, I'm super excited for that. Um, as well, uh, Toronto, I've made a video with that one. I love that one. Um, I've loved a lot of cities in the US. Um, Savannah is one I loved too um london of course and i mean there's so much of europe and there's so many places i haven't even explored like in asia and africa and all that and i'd love to see all of those um i've gotten like 200 comments about istanbul and all my friends are like you gotta go there so i'm sure that's <laughs> another one that i gotta experience but um but yeah there's there's so much i want to see and yeah i mean everywhere is your everywhere is your art so wherever you go it's what you make of it so no. yeah Nice. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about that um, bucket list, if there is one. So um, another question actually from Shiroji is, if you had the opportunity, what or where would you absolutely love to photograph? Um, I, I'd love to go to Asia. That's my one. Uh, my, my parents have heard the crime of me going, 
I want to go around, you know, Tokyo, or you want to go to South Korea and explore the, the countryside. But uh, I just, I see photos from creators I follow. Um, and it's just such a beautiful place there that encompasses everything. Um, so I'd love to go to Asia and not like East Asia. I just love to explore that whole area of, you know, the entire thing, like I said, um, Istanbul is that kind of idea and just all of that of Europe. There's, there's so many places I want to go. It's, I could, I could name a list. I've had, you know, multiple documents of fake trips I've planned that I hope to go on eventually. So there's lots, but yeah, I'd love to go to Asia for sure. That is awesome. And I think we really look forward to seeing, um, the content that comes out of that. Cause I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. Um, so we'll be watching your page and we'll actually link to Matt's, um, just social pages after after this so you can also be watching for that uh matt i know that you have touched on this in our in our discussion earlier but just for those who have joined a little late there is another question um how do you edit your photos um are you relying on a specific trend and what are your tips in general um, yeah, so I think me editing a photo comes down to just um, what I've kind of developed in my, my years of photography. Um, uh, I obviously at first take the photo, I find opportunities, either I plan them out or I don't plan them out. But when I edit them, I kind of have an artistic take I want to take on it. Um, and I think editing is a really powerful tool for that. Um, I think it's almost as half as important as taking the photo is editing. Um, and for example, if I want to make a photo more moody and more dramatic, I could take, you know, what would be a kind of cloudy eh, kind of boring day and make it you know super per like blue and heavy tones and super kind of impactful and um i think that that all comes down to what you want to take of your photo um i've done that over a long time just making presets making edits and um you can take a lot of photos into different directions depending on your editing so um yeah it really comes down to what i want to make the photo have as the end result and uh what i want to see the photo turn into so I think that's awesome. Uh, so we're getting a lot of questions around the camera that you use or the camera that you'd recommend. You have mentioned um, that, or what well, we've mentioned on your behalf that you, you're a Canon, a avid Canon user. Um, but what would you recommend for entry level photography? Um, so there's two questions. What would you recommend for entry level photography and what is the best affordable camera? So it's basically. Um, I think the most important thing I might even say this live stream is that the best camera that you have is the one, the best camera you can get is the one you already have because um, ultimately photography is not something that you, you know, understand completely if you, you know, buy a $2,000 camera because gear doesn't make the photo, the photo, just the photo makes the camera, you know, it's, it's all kind of what your eye says and what the vision is. So I've seen people take, you know, better photos than I even taken at all on like an iPhone or like a camera that you get you know, anywhere. And that's really just how photography is. Um, but getting that aside, um, anything that's like, you know, a starter DSLR, I got mine, you know, used, it was old, it was from like 2009. And it really got me everywhere I needed to go. So if you think you need like an expensive camera to get into photography, that's a myth. Um, if you can find any DSLR, um, or anything that you can see used, uh, Canon T1i, T2i, 3i, any of those, um, that's perfect. And any camera that you have right now, will get you exactly what you need if you have the time. So for sure. It's all about capturing the moment. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Um, so we've got at NBS Picks asking, um, do you think posting photos over reels or video on Insta is still a good way to reach uh, more audience? Um, I think it's hard. I had someone ask me this a bit earlier um, about using reels and uh, photos comparative for posts. Um, and unfortunately, I think that it's a lot harder to get like a larger audience only using posts. Um, Instagram obviously prioritizes reels now, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's just the way the platform has evolved. And I think that if you really want to get that big audience, you have to use reels. Um, but don't discredit using posts. I mean, I still post three times a week, no matter how many reels I post, because I just love sharing my photos. You know, it's something that is my drive. I'm a photographer first, you know, everything came later. And um, I think I should never lose that. And you should never lose that. So even if you make reels about things that are trending or whatever is, you know, hot at the moment, always make sure you have time to share your work and your art that people want to see because that's what you're here for, you know, that you're still a photographer. And that's something that shouldn't get lost in anything. So 
Cool. Um, and then I am Cindy Elizabeth wants to know, what are your thoughts on self portraits? Mm. I mean, I, I love self portraits. Um, I think that it's, it's something that you can do because sometimes it's hard to get, you know, someone to get your model and, you know, someone to time it and plan it and get them to pay or whatever. And sometimes you want to just say, I want a cool picture of myself. And yeah, I mean, before anything, I was almost just like, photography is cool, but like, you know, it's kind of cool to get like this cool picture of me too, you know, to share to people. And even that is not even an invalid reason to start photography. It's awesome to get cool photos of yourself. I always think about like, in like 10 or 15 years, it's gonna be really cool to see these photos in, you know, in time. So take those self portraits, you know, even though you feel a little weird doing them, or you think it's like, self centered, take them, post them, and do that because they're awesome. I mean, it's always so fun. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and then we have a question. I, I don't know if you'll have the answer for this, but the question is, how's the Canon T7i? <laughs> That's funny. That's the camera I used um, before my 90D uh, up until about November of last year. Um, and I mean, it got me everywhere. It got me where I wanted to be for sure. Um, it's a great camera. Uh, I think that I had a T1i, then I went to a T7i, then I went to a 90D. And Okay, we've lost Matt for a little bit. Um, he'll probably be joining us again. Uh, thank you so I much can't... for your questions, guys. Oh, Matt, are you there? I'm back. I'm sorry, my internet's been brutal. I, I apologize. Um, uh, but yeah, <laughs> so, on, the, okay. on the T7i question, yeah, because I had a T1i, then I moved to a T7i, and then an IED. Um, I think I said that was a perfect progression um, because the T7i is a perfect milk around camera that you can really you know, take time into and really become like a master of the camera from that camera. And it's not too complicated to not understand. So yeah, T7i, I love that camera. I loved it to death. I still love it. It's a great camera. So absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> and then another question that I think you probably get asked a lot um, is what do you think about AI in the present? So we've actually had, we've got two questions. One of asking, what do you think about AI in the present? And I think another one is alluding to whether you think it's going to affect content creation. Um, yeah, I have a lot of opinions on AI. I think it's definitely a scary thing that's going to come in the next five or 10 years. But um, ultimately, I think that although it can be used as a tool or it can be used to replace tools, um, nothing will ever be replaced as a person or an artist through AI because AI can never take a new idea and create it into something like a human could. And I think that it's important to remember um, kind of the artistic integrity and how humans make art. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be a huge thing in content creation and everything art related. Um, of course, the strikes in Hollywood, it's already seen our, its way getting into film and media, um, but it's a, uh, it's a scary, but very interesting and a definitely game changing thing that could come in the next five or 10 years. So, um, yeah, as long as artistic integrity remains and people keep on, you know, creating the art and the movies and the, the pictures that we all love to see. Um, I think it's important that, I mean, I think it's, it's very, very safe to say that it'll be okay. All photographers and artists will figure it out. So, yeah. Very, very good answer, Matt. Um, and then from at last 171, um, wants to know what is your favorite set of lenses to use? Mm -hmm. um, I think lenses are more important than the camera in my opinion. Um, so I think getting a good lens is important. Uh, and I see my two favorite lenses is, I love the 50 millimeter 1.8 Nifty 50. Um, that was my kind of introductory like lens that got me really into taking photos because it's so versatile, it's cheap, it's uh, durable, it's it's like the perfect starter lens. So if you're reading this, you have a TSLR, you want to get a new lens, go for the 50 millimeter. Um, but I have this Tamron 18 to 400 and it basically doesn't leave my camera. Um, uh, when you're doing street photography or, you know, fast paced photography, uh, it's perfect because you have all the range, you have the perfect f-stops. Um, and I love it. It's my favorite lens for the past year ish. And although it's a little pricey, I think it's definitely worth it for how much I've used it. Awesome. Um, and then we've got a really interesting question from at shoots by um, a hill uh, or at shoots by Sahil. Sorry, any advice you'd have to get rid of self criticism and not posting anything because there's so much overwhelming content around you. 
yeah, that's, that's something I had to learn for sure. I mean, this happened basically the whole thing. It was two months before it, like it were really just shot off. And, um, I was not used to that, you know, like I got like maybe two comments before this and now I'm getting, you know, hundreds are saying Ron Weasley, you know, uh, Shaggy. And it's like, it's something that I had to get used to, but ultimately the loud minority is just a loud minority. And there's so many people that, you know, every single Friday see your content that matters so much more. Okay, Matt's giving a very um, important response. So we're going to wait for Matt to reconnect. Um, and then we will ask him the question again, because I think it's a very interesting question. So thank you for that. Yes. Uh, sorry, Matt. I, so you can just carry on. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that question. Um, I think, yeah, it's so it's super hard at first to realize that these people are just, you know, naysayers in the comments, but um it's just it's just comments and ultimately the hardest thing is just saying that you know these people don't need to affect your content and you just have to ignore them um but yeah if you think about all the people that wake up and see your content and enjoy it and love your content i mean it's it's something that drives it way more than anything else could so i that's what i always look for people that love my content and stuff like that and the naysayers are naysayers i don't you know, they're whatever. There's something you have to do. That's it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, at Aesthetic says, yo, I have no time to watch this, but your content is amazing. Keep it up. So, I mean, honestly, whatever you're doing, it is working. It is amazing. Um, really top tier visuals from you. Um, but just to say Ace Aesthetics, um, we are going to save this live, so please do come back and watch it and also just keep um, following Matt for more of that content and for more of his tips. Um, I'm just going to check if we have any more. Well, we've got a lot of questions. So I just need to um, sift through them. Um, people are getting a lot of very positive comments um, on your content. Uh, but I did want to ask this from, from my side. What are your future plans and goals as a full-time photography creator? Like, are there any existing um, or exciting projects or endeavors that you're currently working on or hoping to pursue soon? Yeah. So, um, as I said earlier, I'm moving out at West. I'm going to Vancouver and that's going to be a big change for sure. Um, I think my content's going to be a lot more focused and I have a lot more time to do things photography related. Um, but ultimately this is all something that kind of comes to me as I go, you know, I don't really have a, you know, a 2023 plan. None of this was on my 2023 bingo or anything like it's all kind of come to me as it, it ha as it happens. So, um, I'm really open to every idea as it comes, every single, you know, new offer or new opportunity is something I always, you know, jump on. And it's something that, you know, I'm excited by. I think that everything's going to be, it's going to be an interesting six months. And I, I mean, there's lots to come. So I just think, yeah, I'm super, I'm super excited. I mean, I, there's no, no words. It's just, it's just awesome. I can't wait to see the next six months. That is awesome. Awesome. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be very exciting. So good luck for that. Um, just going back to our questions quickly um, from at GXBF wants to know, um, should I keep my content one theme or can I change? And I think this is a very interesting one when it comes to what a content creator's look or aesthetic is. And I think that's really what the question is around. Um, should content creators have a identifiable aesthetic? Should they have a theme or should they be changing it up? Um, I think it's hard because there's so many things that come into content creation that are so hard to say right and wrong, you know? Um, and ultimately, I think that it's really important to carve out your niche um, and find the thing that people follow you for. But until you have that, I think that there's nothing wrong with changing your content and constantly making different types of ideas because, um, you know, it's hard. There's a lot of different people making a lot of different content. Um, and if you think you have to make one niche and you really focus on one and it doesn't really click, it's, it's demotivating, you know, it's hard. So I think it's perfectly okay to make whatever content you want to make, but when you have that, you know, that, that lightning, that thing that really works, um, capitalizing on it is exactly what this platform is for. And that's why you get all your followers, you get the people coming in every week and that's where you get the, the, the loyal audience that sees your content. So yeah, hope that answers it. <laughs> 
Cool. Um, and Joseph Laura actually wants to know, do you have any tips for color theory or on color theory? Um, I'm, I'm not the right ass person to ask about this. <laughs> I, I'm like, I kind of, you know, do this, do this, and then people like it. Sometimes I'm always like, oh, there's color theory here. But um, again, I think color is a really important asset in instilling mood. Like I said, um, making sure to have like a very distinct focal point with different colors or having like, you know, things be brighter oranges when they're happier or blues when they're more dark. Um, that's that kind of idea of using color to convey emotion in my eyes is color theory. Um, and that's really important when using photos because you know, everything's emotion. Everything's how you tell a story through a photo. So yeah, I'd say that for sure. Although I'm not, I'm not the color theory person you want to ask, go ask an artist because they're <laughs> a, visual, a visual artist painter. I, 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 that's beyond <laughs> me, so. <laughs> cool, thanks, Matt. Um, we're getting a lot of questions around editing um, and we have one around um, you know, somebody asking, what are you what is your advice when you start editing literally from square uh one like from the very first step you're just starting out um what advice would you give someone um uh, i kind of what i said earlier just keep going because that's the hardest part the hardest part is just saying i'm bad at this and this is not something i'm comfortable with and i have to just you know keep working because it sucks seeing things that like you aren't you're making this and it's not the way you want it to be because you just don't have the experience yet and that's really demotivating but well guys we just wait a little for matt um hope I'm, you're getting so the sorry it keeps going out. no worries <laughs> Don't worry, you are worth waiting for. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, just on that topic, just the hardest parts of the first few months, um, knowing that you're bad at something is hard and knowing that you will get better is something that can be kind of hard to believe when you see a piece of artwork that you see and you're not like, you know, super happy about it. It's something that you're not super proud of. Um, so just keep, keep working. That's really the best thing. Keep trying, keep doing what you're doing because eventually you look back at it and you realize how far you've actually come when you think you've just been crawling towards one thing, you know, it's, so it's something that you just have to wait for. And with editing, especially, you'll see the end results. It's something that you will learn and understand soon enough. Cool. And I think just um, in a similar vein, we have a question around doing a creative photo shoot. Um, so the question is, how do I do a creative photo shoot, like editing myself, but in different ways and maybe this is more from like for somebody just starting out mm -hmm. um i think it's hard because being creative in a landscape where there's millions of other photographers is a hard thing to do because you know there's some things that have been done already that you think oh i can't do that you know this has already been done by, by this person but um it all comes down to how you take it yourself and how you take that creative photography to your own limits so um one follow photographer i follow moody darkroom is his name um He's really inspired me to use more like soft lenses and a lot more intense lighting. Um, and for example, I never like copy his photos, but that in itself has made me, you know, go to different scenes differently and take different photo uh, photographs I would have taken, you know, the way I used to with different approaches that people really like. So um, I think it all comes down to how you follow photographers and how you take it into your own will because creativity is something that you, you know, you adapt to, you learn from. So yeah. Just, just keep on creating. You'll find that awesome spark and that awesome photo eventually. Awesome. Um, and I know that you've already answered this, but I think just for um, our viewers to hear again, um, the question from At Wicker Baby is, do you think people who take uh, photos with their phone are, or take photography using your phone are valid? Yeah, absolutely. Not even, not even a thought in my mind says with the rise. Um, like I said, there's people that take photos on phones that I couldn't even take because they're just so intensely beautiful. And the way they use it is just the phone, you know, it's something that we all have. And it's something that I think, especially like after like, you know, 10 or 20 years ago, when you didn't even have the opportunity to have this phone everywhere you went and this camera, um, I think it's something that will get a lot of photographers uh, into photography when they weren't before because um, yeah, I think it, it's something that you have as a privilege and I think it's really important to use it and there's nothing wrong with that. There's no wrong, no wrong ways to do photography. It's all what you have and what you have to create. So, yeah, 
nothing wrong with phones. Keep shooting with your phones, <laughs> get that camera eventually, but you know, see the world as you see it, you know, it's perfectly fine. Um, and then just another question that's related to, again, what um, content creators do sometimes struggle with, especially when they're starting out. And we did kind of chat about it, but the question is, how do you respond to negative um, comments or responses? Yeah, and I think this is really important for anyone who's becoming a creator. Um, it's really important to divide um, genuine feedback and just people being, you know, people hating. Um, like I said, someone who says like, this guy sucks, he's ugly, la, la, la. like that's something that you just ignore because that's not gonna help you in any way. But let's just say someone comments, um, oh, there's a, there's a thing with your lens, try to make it, you know, more wide, or um, this is a really good shot, but there's a lot of ISO, try using it more stable, like stable camera, and you'll get like a better shot and stuff like that. That's stuff you wanna listen to because that stuff is generally trying to help you become a better photographer. And knowing the line between that and just people being, you know, people being mad um, is super important because you're gonna get both. When you get content, you're gonna get people who are genuine photographers that wanna help you and people that just wanna see you fall. So knowing the difference there is important and that's hard, but eventually it'll click and you'll understand all of that. Awesome, but I must say you are getting a lot of very positive um, comments, love from Oklahoma, from India. Um, this is really great to see. Love from around the world. Um, but really, really great advice. People saying, love your work, love your content. Um, so that's awesome. I'm just going to check if we've got um, other questions. So, yes, another one um, from Shiroji. Shiroji. Shiroji, I'm really sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, <laughs> do you plan your photos before you shoot? If so, how? Um, again, that's hard because it uh, it doesn't always happen. You know, like sometimes you have a planned shoot that you think is going to be perfect, it doesn't go well, or you'll walk into the street and see the most beautiful sunset and scene, and um, it's your best photo ever. And that's happened to me a lot of times. You know, I've had some shots from my favorite, like my power lines, um, Shades of the Evening. That one was very planned. I thought about that one beforehand and it turned out, you know, very well. Versus like um, one of my ones where um, I had my drone out, I was flying around for fun and I turn around and there's this beautiful scene of the leaves being different colors. And it's like, whoa, that's my favorite shot ever. And it's, it's something that kind of comes to you when you just have your camera always on you. So I think there's definitely merits to planning out your shots. I think you'll have a lot of the time a really good shot out of it. Uh, like four to five times, but sometimes that one time out of the five where it's completely unplanned is your School right. Matt is just um, reconnecting, but like I said, unplanned content might be your best um, content. Yes. I don't know where, where, we, where we, I don't know where we cut off there. Um, I'm sorry. I hope that. Was... No, I think I think you gave a really good response, and we're actually almost at the end of our live. We have so many questions. Thank you so much, guys, for sending in your questions. Um, we will be linking to Matt's social pages, so please go and follow Matt. Um, promise you, you're going to get amazing content, including how to videos and tutorials. Um, Matt, do you have any like? closing um, advice or comments for your absolute fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, just I, I'm really happy to be here and be a leverage to photographers that want to become photographers. And I, if anything you can get out of this is just to keep creating, keep learning and keep making content because it's worth it. You know, you, you'll, your art will be seen by millions and it, it'll be loved. So keep making content. Um, I really was happy to be here and talk to you guys and get some feedback back and um, I really appreciate being here. Um, if you have any questions, you can also message me back. I, I try to message, answer the messages I can. I get a lot, but I really hope I can help out some other photographers and want some advice. And yeah, just thank you, Prequel, for having me. Um, it's been an awesome opportunity, and um, I'm happy to be here. It's, this is my first big interview, so thank you. Thank you. It's been so amazing. Thank you for agreeing to participate and just be here to chat um, to fans and content creators about content creation, um, tips, tricks. If you've missed anything, Matt has answered a lot of, a lot of your questions already. So the live will be available, um, it will be saved. So please watch it again. Um, really, really great advice, really great tips, Matt. You have been amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs>
happy to be here. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you so much to everyone. You guys have all been great. Thank you for your amazing comments. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you on the next prequel live. Bye, everyone. Right. Bye, Matt. See you guys. See you. <laughs>